Hello everyone, this is Will Sarconi and welcome back to another episode of Translation Aberrations. This week we'll be looking at some examples where a human translator may have come in handy. Trust me, you'll see what I mean. Let's get right into it. This week's first tragedy is a road sign posted to warn drivers of low visibility conditions. We're starting off with some of the more forgivable offenses this time, where a lot of things could have gone wrong and did go wrong, but you can still understand the intended meaning. Be aware of invisibility. It's rather difficult, you know. Now it seems to me that be aware was meant to be beware, but the former still conveys the intended meaning. Now it's by no means the best translation, but it gets the job done nonetheless. Invisibility was probably trying to say no or low visibility, and while the English prefix in can mean not Invisibility is an entirely different thing, but I can't really rag on them that hard for something as simple as this. It's just an overextension of grammar rules. Next we have a wet floor sign originally posted in Chinese. Much like the first example, there's one word that sticks out above the rest. Be careful of landslide. Well, it's not bad advice. Definitely not what they were going for, but again, we can figure out what they mean by looking at context clues, like the picture in the corner for example. Landslide was most likely something spit out by a machine translator, but it could definitely be a human error as well. Wet floors cause us to slide on land after all. Now these next examples all have one thing in common. The use of an online translation service. I'm sure you can already guess that these are going to be much less forgivable than the first two examples. First we have a woman who wanted a translated sentence tattooed on her back in Hebrew. The sentence was translated using Babylon, the online service, and it certainly shows once you translate it back to English. The woman will probably be upset to know that she has an ad permanently pasted on her back. As it reads, Babylon is the world's leading dictionary and translation site. I'd be willing to bet that's not what she wanted. <laughs> Next we have a translation from Chinese to Russian, posted outside of what I can only assume is a podiatrist's clinic. The sign in Russian reads, Fina Bruk, Dvenoi, which in English translates to two legs, pants firm. Now this is obviously a copy-paste job from a translation service. It makes no sense whatsoever. It might not even be a podiatrist clinic for all I know, because all I can glean from it is that they treat pants with two legs. These next two examples also used online translation services, but they forgot one important thing. Their internet connection. Oh, you got a haircut, how nice. Where did you go? Oh, well, you know, just down the street to, uh, could not connect to translator service. Jeez, I hope their hair cracks aren't as bad as their internet connection. Here's another example with the same problem. This is why back translations are important. You can double check your work, and it might lead you to check your ethernet cable too. Finally, we have an example of a translation that didn't even make it past the first step. It's meant to be a tag on a tanker truck, labeling its contents as diesel fuel, and then a no smoking warning below. The client wanted the tag to be posted in Arabic, but what they got was this. I'm certain they weren't happy with these results. Diesel fuel in Arabic, and no smoking in Arabic. Now this is where being too literal backfires. It's like a bad joke, but it's for real this time. I wonder if Arabic speakers found it as funny as I did. Now there's obviously not even an attempt to translate the sentences, and there is a fundamental misunderstanding of what the client wanted in the first place. And look, just like last week, there's a typo. When will people learn to check their work for errors? That about does it for this week's episode. Thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like down below, and also leave a comment telling us what's the laziest mistake you've seen in translation. Remember to keep those submissions coming at contact at dlmit.com, double check your work, and your internet. And like always, we'll see you all next week. <laughs>